to that episode, you can ask my wife. My wife was like, you know, oh, you know, I saw a little tear in your eye, and she was probably right. I didn't want to admit it, but there was a little, uh, little, little tear there. You know what I mean? As, uh, you know, to see the actual. I mean, listen. My biggest issue with the sequel trilogy was what they did with Luke, all right? You know what I mean? I know, I get it. They wanted to subvert our expectations, and Luke was this bitter old man. I, I can I can almost see it. But what we all wanted as Star Wars fans for years was to see the return of Luke Skywalker in just that, you know, that Jedi Fear, fierce power. Jedi. G- fierce Jedi yeah. power, and that's what we got at the end of Mandalorian yeah. Season 2. I got to yeah. tell you, though. Yeah. Luke wasn't the only problem with that trilogy. Uh, we, we can go back to Star Wars, but yes. I just wanted to f- officially intro this episode yeah, and say welcome to God's Pulitzer yes, Radio. Yes, welcome, finally, after all this time. Uh, I know. This, uh, this is Adam Miner. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, Adam Miner here, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Tim Howard. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, amen. See how and, it didn't go amen. a long, I know, elaborate. I know. Well, we have a we we already recorded part of it. You know what I mean? We did, That's right? You know what I mean? But again, and, he is my brother in Christ, my amen. friend, my and brother, and here, my brother. pastor, the Reverend. Amen. Timothy and, R. Howard Jr. Amen. And thank you, brother. Amen. Praise yeah. God. He uh we we've been together quite a bit today already. We uh yep. We did a um, I guess what amounts to a pastor's summit, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Get with together. with our guest. From later, from later, we're gonna have our, our guest come on later in the episode, um, but we were recording this part of the episode after that part of the episode. Right. A little inside baseball for you, yep. uh, but we're, we're recording this as sort of an intro to that interview. So uh, yep. uh, we're gonna have our, our guest on. His name is Doug Blank. Yep, and he is the president of Davis College. He How is, cool is that? That is really awesome. You know Man, what I mean? And that's a that's that's a that's a big get. It is for I know, Gospel we, Radio. I know. I you know probably uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's awesome. we, we had a lot of good guests. We had awesome guests. By mean, the way, if you're watching this and you haven't watched last week's episode, yes. which is uh, our great interview with Julia Budd. Yes, from, that was great. Uh, Josiah Venture, go ahead check that out. She was awesome. Yeah, um, it was great she's episode. doing great work over in uh, Czech Republic. She's yeah. uh, going to be going back there, I think, next month. Yep, I think so. She's doing oh, her rounds here in the yep. in the states, and then heading so. back. And but uh, but yeah, Doctor Blank, uh, Doug Blank, good man, good friend, um, and uh, gave me an opportunity to be able to um, teach some online classes through Davis College about a year yeah. and a half ago. Professor and Howard, guys. Professor Howard. I know I don't really advertise it too much, no, but he's I, a, uh, guys, he's a teacher too. Yeah, you did know, you know? Did you know? I know. Yes. You know Timmy, what I mean? Timmy, did you I, know? I, Timmy, did you know? I know that's very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, see, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't advertise it too much. Number one, because I want enrollment to go up for the college. <laughs> uh, you know, not nice. You know, <laughs> Nice. Uh, not down, but uh, but yeah, uh, nice. it's been a it's been a privilege, and uh, he's he's a good man. He's not just the president of the Bible College, though. He's uh, he's also a pastor of um, yeah. uh, Hope Chapel uh, up there in upstate New York, uh, and um, he yeah. uh, you, you can check him out on on his uh, uh, Facebook page yeah. and his website for that. We'll, we'll, uh, ha- we'll have we'll all the info all in the description. On, but, uh, he was kind enough to give us about thirty or forty minutes of his time um, after that summit. After I keep calling it a summit, it was yeah. a summit. Yeah, I'm, it was, I'm calling yeah, it a summit. It was a summit. I, th- I think that's a good appropriate that's what word. Call it. That's appropriate word. Yeah, that's, that's what right. We're Absolutely, it. amen. Uh, you know? So he sat down with us for a little bit. We talked a bunch of stuff. We talked about his past. We talked about his upbringing on a dairy farm. Well, uh, his grandfather's dairy Grandfa- farm. Grandfather's dairy farm. Uh, a lot of great stuff there. Uh, his how he became involved in not only Davis College but involved in just ministry work in general right. he, he had a great he had great stories right. about uh growing up and god just working in him yeah um and it was really cool amazing uh, to hear yeah he had a lot he had some great stories that uh hopefully will inspire you guys Amen. and hopefully if you guys are listening to this and you're wondering hey where do i want to go to college yeah i mean maybe you'll give davis college a, yeah, a thought check it out uh davis college is um in Potter, they're physically in Pottersville. Right. Uh, they share a campus with Word of Life Bible Institute. Um, great college. I'm kind of biased, but seems how I work. I work for Word of Life, but uh, D- Davis is. Um, they, they, they share a campus with Word of Life there, and they do a lot of online stuff as yep. well. Yep. Get your whole degree uh, online if you ever, you know, yep. no matter where you are in the world. You could do you all know? four years online. You yep. could do a couple years at Word of Life, and then transfer right over to Davis for the last yep. two. 
Uh, you can do one at Word of Life and three at Davis. Yep. You can do all four Davis there. You yep. can do whatever combination. They have a great agreement there with Word of yeah, Life. They do. Um, it's excellent. Uh, we're, again, we'll have all the info in the uh, description, and we're going to get to that interview in just a little bit. But first, yes, I had something I wanted to talk to you about. You want to talk to me about something? I okay. did not run this by you. No, that's all right. You can run. Your, your, your. Uh, so open book, brother. You know, <laughs> amen. Yeah. This is something we got in our email. Okay. And it's from who I would say is probably. Our biggest fan. Our biggest fan. Okay. His name is Seth. So Seth, yes. if, if, you're, if you're listening to this. Hi, Seth. This is for you, buddy. <laughs> um, he he wrote us a poem. Ah, a poem. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I wanted to give this a shout on the pod because yeah. Uh, I I love good poetry, man. I just Poetry do. is good. I like poetry. Especially poetry that just talks about me. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you. All right. Yeah. So this so, is yeah, he called he calls this uh and this is the first time you read this, right? No, no I haven't I haven't seen it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't even It was in yeah. our email. So I know you I, check I, the email a lot more I, than yeah. me. I know. <laughs> I grabbed onto it. Uh this is called Ode to Gospelicious Radio. Ah, uh, I like it already. I, we, <laughs> Ode. I I need like background music to read this. <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. You ready? Yes. We, we need we need a, a deep breath. Focus, focus, focus. Can you hear my breathing? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. Yes. In all seriousness, here's a very serious poem. Yes. Amen. By Seth. By Seth. Okay. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Seth. Ode to Gospelicious Radio. Yeah. At 1.50 p.m. on a Friday, I put my earbuds in. Do not disturb me. You've been warned. Finally, it's 2 p.m. and my pod is set to begin. On another topic, I will soon be informed. Your stream of words, Adam and Tim, are a cacophony of sinuous sounds. I like that. I don't know if that's an insult I, or a compliment. I know. I was going to say, uh, I like that word, though. Si- I don't know. What was that? I like cacoph- ca- cacophony? Ca- cacophony. Cacophony. Yeah. That means cacophony means loud noises. Wow. That's, a, that's, a, that's yeah. great. I, I like that. That's a that great good, word. Is that good that's or a, bad? I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. I'll yeah. start that one again. Yeah, yeah. Let's Your go. stream of words, Adam and Tim are a cacophony of sinuous sounds. Silently, I listen to this new hymn while his love abounds. Mm. Amen, brother. Um. How do I describe what you do? Question mark. The perfect word is fictitious. Again, not sure if that's a compliment or an yeah, insult. Yeah, yeah. Used ever since your debut, you are gospelicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. With a fun intro at the very start, I anxiously wait for the segue to come. Ah, uh-huh. he's listening. Yeah. <laughs> like a Picasso, this is a work of art. <laughs> Good stuff. If you were a sandwich, I would devour every crumb. Ah, uh-huh. that's that's great. I like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure how to take that one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Every episode is a scriptural goldmine. Don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> don't need a shovel, just a broom. All right. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Just like Almondine, what's Almondine? I'll have to look that up. Look that up. Yeah. Proof that our faith is not simply a costume. Last stanza. Yeah. You both give glory to the Lord in all you say. I'm sad when you finally tie the bow. He is listening. Because I have to wait until next Friday to listen to Gospelicious Radio. Oh, thank you, Seth. Yes, yes, yes. That was amazing. And that was Poetry Theater. That's right. With Adam and Tim. What what was it? How how do you pronounce it? Almond Dean? Almond Dean? A-L-A-L. Seth, you're like bringing vocab into this that I'm not even sure. And I'm a a vocab guy, too. Almond Dean? It's A-L-A. I'm sorry. A-L-M-A-N. D I N E Alman Dean, Alman Dean. All right, yeah. I'm look. I'm. I know. Seth I'm knows here. words that I don't know. Alman Dean. Oh, it's it's a. Uh, I'm looking this. Oh, up. it's a it's a mineral. Oh, it's a mineral. A gemstone. Yeah, a gemstone. Wow. Ah, yeah. Look so at that. We learned something. That's yeah, a compliment. We figured it out. Alman Dean, also Seth, known as you googled that. That was yeah. You didn't know that. <laughs> Get, out on, Seth. Get out of here. Get out of here. Also known as almondite, it is a species of mineral belonging to the Garnet group. Don't act like you know what that means. I know. Yeah, I'm just reading it off <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> it's like I don't even know if it's true or not. The formula is uh, Fe two over three. Uh, anyway, never mind. No, no, no. They're getting into all the scientific. So thank you, Seth, yeah, for that awesome you. poem. Yes, that's good stuff. 
Uh, if you guys want to also send in odes to Gospel yeah, yeah. Radio, we, we, we will gladly read them on on uh, on the pod here. Yes, I will gladly gladly read them. Thank you very much. Um, our good buddy Seth also had uh, other stuff in our mailbag. I wanted to pass along. Awesome, awesome. Uh, this is uh, this part will be dedicated to the Seth questions and poems <laughs> section of the pod. <laughs> Um, he sent a bunch of stuff. We're not gonna be able to get to all these, Seth, but I will. I want to tackle look, maybe a couple of them before we get to our sure. guest uh, for this episode. Um, uh, see which one is. Um, oh my. Okay, here's here. This is an interesting one. This kind of goes hand in hand with um. You know, we talk about. Um, this time of year and uh, g- uh, grief that people might go through because of uh, mm. people who have passed on in their lives, loved ones. Um, what are your thoughts on honoring loved ones who have passed away? And hmm. when might this become idolatry? That's a really, really, really good question. And it's loaded, too. That's a loaded question. Yeah. Wow. Is, good there, question. is there even a quick way to address that? Um, at what point, I guess, I guess, if I'm interpreting this question correctly, yeah. At what point does honoring a loved a pa- a loved one that's passed on? At what point does that become more than honoring them, and it becomes a source of idolatry for you in, in your life? Yeah, I mean, I I really think it kind of boils down to the individual. I mean, honestly, I mean, like we we definitely want to. I mean, the Bible over and over again. I mean, Proverbs and other places talks about honoring our. Uh, you know, honoring, well, it talks about honoring the gray head, uh, you know, not to be, I mean, the older. Um, there's also a reason behind why the scriptures uh, keep the lists of genealogies besides just their connection to Christ. Obviously, that's the biggest, uh, you know, obviously that's the biggest, I would say, reason why the genealogies are in the scriptures. But I mean, also, I mean, there there is a sense in, in honoring your your parents, uh, yeah. honoring your grandparents. Um, where does it become idolatrous? Well, I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, anything can be an idol, uh, to be honest with you. But I think it's where we, we kind of uh, idolize them, you know, I, I mean, not to use that terminology, but I mean, like, put them in that place where, you know, our... I, I think it can come in many forms. I think that what we what we generally tend to do is those who have passed on, and I do this with those loved ones that I... Uh, that have passed on with me is that we tend to just think about all the good things without thinking about the balance that they were still a sinner. Like, for instance, I'll give you a perfect for instance. I was just talking about my wife with my wife about this the other day. My uh, many of you guys know this. My 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 grandfather uh, passed away in, uh, a number of years ago. While I was here, still at uh, Easter Baptist, very close with him. And uh, and you know, I always talk about the good things about him and everything else. But the truth of the matter was. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you also have to be truthful about it. My grandfather was also an old cuss, and uh, and he had he was a Christian man. He loved the Lord, but he had a lot of faults. And uh, I think that where I think that uh, and I'll and I'll throw another one out there too is I've I've seen this happen before too is um, you know I, I think that uh, you know with people who you know I think I've seen it especially like and not to be whatever but people who have maybe had a spouse pass on. That they were really close to, usually younger, um, you know. Who I, I've seen it happen, especially with with widows and widowers. Um, oftentimes, is like, well, uh, you know, they've kind of idolized that, or that's, or that person has been such a part of their life for so long that nobody ever can compare or contrast. Um, you know, I, I I think that uh, and not ever able to move on from there. I mean, it's all different. It's everybody's yeah. different heart heart behind it i think really is the key that is Um, the key and you know it's interesting when we use the word idolatry because an idol is anything that we place above our relationship with god yes so that's you know when we idolize right something that means that we we in, in essence worship that thing right right um so when you talk about honoring loved ones who've passed on that particular action being idolatrous would have to include uh, maybe placing the honoring of that person above honoring God. Yes. So what does that look like? You just said it might look like a bunch of different things. It could be. It I could mean, be anything from, you know, putting a plaque 
in a church. <laughs> oh, or, or yeah. How about this? How about? Uh, I don't know if I'll get in trouble for this one. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, you know, uh, fighting with a church leadership. Say, I'm I'm dealing in hypotheticals. Yeah, here. yeah, 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 yeah. Dealing with church le- or fighting with church leadership about putting a plaque for say your father who passed on. Right, right. Fighting them about putting a plaque up in the church honoring your father and then leaving when you don't right. get your way. Right, right, yeah. I mean, that could be considered an idolatrous that's, note, that's right. right? Exactly, I think that's, so. That's a, that, a thing that that's could a good happen. example. I mean, um, I mean, we, I mean, we, you know, I mean, I, I think that, yeah, I, th- I think that that's certainly part of it. I think, too. Uh, and many you know, yeah. variations of things like that. Yeah. Where you place the that particular honoring of, of this... Loved or, one. or where your posterity is seen on equal plane with with God, you know what I mean? Um, I think people you can do that a bit? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that I think that like for instance, like I mean, like even in like um, like I, I I I guess what came to mind with the question was kind of like even like a cemetery, you know what I mean? Okay. Like with memorials and stuff like that, and yep. and how people will you know oftentimes I mean it, you know, there's nothing wrong with going and visiting the grave and all of this other yeah. stuff, but. How about if you go and do that while you're supposed to be at church? But while you're supposed to be in church, no, because that's that's a good that's a good right. point. Or I think too, and this is another thing, and you can speak more to this, brother, because I mean, like we we've lost loved ones, but yep. I mean, you you lost your brother tragically, sure, and um, you know, to a point like where I've seen people too, where and this is gonna maybe step on a few toes here, but like it gets to be around the time of the year. Um, where you know the person that we were close to passed away the anniversary the anniversary sure. of it and all of a sudden those feelings and everything and you can speak more to this and we allow those and there's nothing wrong with this please i'm not trying to say this but i've seen it where it's crippling to some people yeah. where it's like it gets and and granted and you know this better than me you know the further out that you get from it it gets a little easier it never goes away but at the same time it gets a little easier the scar but, tissue gets tougher but I've also yeah. seen, but I've also seen others where they never get over it. Like sure. the, the the wound is always raw. Right. right. Um, they get to be that time of year, and like I've I literally yeah, that's a tough one. Like I've had people who are like, well, I'm not going to come to church today because I'm really really struggling with so and so who passed. That's the exact reason that's, why you should be here. But that's why you should be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should be in church to the gospel. You know what I mean? So they, I, they yeah the the decision to, I guess give in to the downward spiral right right <laughs> as right. opposed to fighting the downward spiral with rejoice always rejoice in the lord yeah. always Re- philippians yeah and that's an easy that's an easy thing to fall into too because right. you your natural inclination is to bury yourself in the sadness yeah when you come to things like that right i understand that i mean you that's know just it. that's just a natural thing that happens and that that i guess you ha- you have those choices to make yeah. every time that time of year comes around. Um, I can only uh, speak for myself in saying that it has gotten easier. Yeah, um, it's never gotten easy. No, it's not to say it's easy or it's or that you ever really get over it because right. you never do. You know, no, but no, you just you know you have found ways to to deal with it. Uh, people have get, you know there are sources of joy that you have to look to. Right. Uh, mainly the gospel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if that's not your focus, um, uh, you're really missing the mark. Right. Uh, and really, you're missing out on valuable recovery. Yeah. Because <laughs> what ha- it, it's recovery time too. Yes. Like in dealing with stuff like that, you have to emotionally recover. You do. Uh, you can't yeah. just drown uh, every year during that time. No. You have to. You have to find a way to uh, to develop um, ways to strengthen yourself in that yeah. way uh emotional strength is just like any other strength yeah you have to you have to work at it it's yeah. not just something that happens instantaneously you have to develop it you know yeah um so but to saying all that that helps with avoiding the idolatry of of honoring that person yes. more than yes. you should um and look you know look, we're, we're christians here right so right uh I can I can speak for Keith in saying that yeah. uh, he wouldn't have wanted me to dwell on him every year right. around that time. Right. He'd want me to move on and be happy. Yeah. And we'll see him again sometime. Amen. Until that day. It's the joy of the gospel. Brother, you know, there's you know, I don't want you living your life constantly mourning for me. Right. You That's know? the thing. It's like and it, you know, perpetually I'm not gonna forget about you, brother, but 
Yeah. At the same I'm time, I got again. a life to live here. Well, like, I, I'm going to see you again. I'm going to see you again. It's someday. that hope we have, right? That's right. It's the hope of the gospel. And yeah, it's sad, but at the same time, it's it's just a matter of time. It's it not is. an if. It's, it's a when. It's a when when I'm when Which I'm called hope. up to heaven. With it's you. hope. Exactly. Now, and, again, that being said, we're that's the eternal hope that we have as Christians. Right. <laughs> not everyone has that eternal hope. No, they don't. So, it's you know, but again, if he's talking about idolatry, we're talking about people who are concerned. With idolatry, right? Unbelievers aren't concerned with idolatry, no, because they I don't mean, care. <laughs> they don't care about it, and and really, um, this world is their home in in the sense because. Right. So, I mean, if if you don't have this this eternal sense that the gospel gives, it's that perspective. It's perspective, like yeah. that. This this amount of time that we have here on this planet is so minuscule in comparison to eternity. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and that someday we're we're going to have all of eternity to be reunited with those who are in Christ. Um. But if you don't have that, and everything is here and now, and I only have this short period of time, no wonder you're you're you idolize and you become depressed when these things are inevitably taken away from yeah. you, and people are taken away from you, people that you love, and everything else, and and um, and that's and that's really the hope that needs to shine through in us as Christians, uh, you know, that makes us different than the world, that we have an everlasting hope, that we have a savior, a great savior who made a way of salvation for all of us and uh and that you know what all that you know what like uh, no matter what is taken away from me whether right. it's a whether it's a person loved one whatever whatever it might be everything around you everything around you pales in comparison to Christ yeah. Yeah. and so uh yeah I'll tell you what if you can remember that yeah you're not going to have to worry one bit about idolatry yeah amen i mean amen that's, amen that's, that's absolutely what it is. true brother so amen. that's a good question uh, next question from Seth is: Is there any? Well, we talked about this a little bit with, Hall with our right. Halloween episode. Halloween episode. Check, check this out. There, check this out. Check that out. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there any holiday that Christians should not participate in? Uh, well, besides the obvious holidays like Pride Month and uh, you know, I mean, these oh, kind of yeah. things, right? Or I the mean, demonic side of Halloween. Yeah, sure. the demonic side of Halloween. I mean, it, I mean, there's a holiday every day of the year. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I mean, I think that you know, I mean, obviously, there's there's holidays out there that celebrate things that are unbiblical, which you know are sinful that we don't want to mm -hmm. participate in. Um, you know, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, I mean, like, I mean, I talked about it briefly this past Sunday about, you know, I mean, d different things like whether or not we should celebrate Christmas or, um, right. well, I didn't, uh, not this Sunday, I think it was the Sunday before I talked about that. I, uh, and, you know, you know, whether or not Christmas is biblical, whether or not Easter is biblical, whether or not, you know, yeah. but again, it goes back to Romans chapter 14. I think that, you know, uh, that some regard one day as special, uh, and, um, some don't, and we yeah. celebrate it as unto the Lord. And sure. so, yeah, I, I don't know if that's kind of a cop out answer or, or not, but no. I, I mean, I look if you're honoring God, I mean, yeah, can you do something like July Fourth? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can celebrate, right? Celebrate July Fourth by. By thanking God for a country that you live in. Yeah, you know what I mean? Memorial you Day, that. you know what I mean? Same Veterans thing. Day, Th you know what I mean? Thank God for the veterans that have protected you. Yeah, thank the Lord for this uh, great country you can honor in. God with right, all those right. holidays. Absolutely, Honor I think God so. with Christmas. If you're going to do New Year's, honor God with it. Yeah, thank him for right. a new year. Absolutely, you know what I mean? Uh, if you're going to do Valentine's so. Day, thank him for your spouse. For your spouse, right, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, they're, 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 the, the ideas of some of these holidays can be applied generally in a in a biblical sense. I right, I think so. So I don't think there are too many that, Christians should really just avoid, maybe except for some parts of Halloween, maybe and Pride Month, Pride Month, those kind of things. Celebrations I mean, like, of sin. Yeah, sin. I think anything that's any like celebration of sin, right? Yeah. Um, any anything that uh, is contrary to God's word, I think yeah. that yeah. we we turn our nose up at. Sure. You know what I mean? Or, Easy one. Yeah. All right. I don't know what this question is. Maybe you can help me. Maybe okay. you understand. This will be yeah. our last one. Yeah, sure. uh, sorry, Seth. There are a ton more here, but <laughs> we will get to them another time. But. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, Seth, for for leading the way on sending us yes, Seth, sending thank us questions. You. I like this kind of like our mailbag. Yeah, I know. I like the mailbag. We, we, we need a mailbag. We need a mailbag, guys. Send yeah. us mailbag stuff. Yeah, we like we like questions. Yes, absolutely. Send us mailbag. All right. Is it okay for Christians to be involved in prank wars? <laughs> What's prank wars? Am I missing something here? Uh, you know, I I don't know. Um... Is that just like um, getting involved with like a, a, a back and forth prank? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, well, you know, prank prank war. I I I can't. I mean, I'm assuming it. Obviously, it's some kind of. You know, I, I'm assuming it's some kind of battle royale between uh, you know two people. Uh, you know, pranking one another, playing pr yeah. playing jokes on one another. I mean. I mean 
It depends. It, I think it really <laughs> depends. Okay. What are the pranks? Like, 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 what uh, are the pranks? Like, like, for instance, I mean, the verse that popped in my head was uh, Ephesians five, verse four. Um, I'm going to read it from. Um, uh, I'll read it from the ESV. It says, "It says, let there be no filthiness, yeah. nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, mm-hmm. which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving." And so, I think, I think it's okay to play pranks, uh, you know, yeah. uh, in in general, but. If they get like on the gross side or coarse or uh, filthy or or obscene um, or <laughs> right, I was gonna I was gonna go that way too, just or embarrassing and for ba- them. Yeah. And, or and and what I mean by that is like I think of prank wars like you know, are you like, you know, pulling someone's shorts down in public? Yeah, or something yeah, that's like kind that. of obscene. That's you know obscene, I mean? right? And and also meant to meant to bring the person harm or embarrassment. Right. right. Um. There's a line there. There is a big line. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Like, so I know I know it's kind of a gray answer to that, but I would say, yeah, depends. It depends. Uh, like, like I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a perfect for instance. Like, like when I was in when I was in Bible college, uh, Sharpie, if you're listening to this, um, the you you know uh, firsthand, uh, we, we we had uh, we had somewhat of if you want to call it prank wars, um, if uh, we would we would do things to each other all the time, um, small things, but like uh, you know just because we're you know, just brothers, brothers in Christ, kind of just ragging on each other a little bit. You got to be careful how far it goes. But like, I'll give you a perfect for instance is something um, in in Bible college where our where our, our um, dorm was was on the opposite side of the campus from where the cafeteria was, and you were going there all the time because it was cafetorium. So you were going in and out of that building all the time. Cafetorium, so, cafetorium, or whatever. Yeah, and and so. <laughs> And so, uh, and so you had to walk across campus, and of course we were up in the the uh, Poconos up there in Clark Summit, and uh, and so it was cold and snowy most of the time, and so and so uh, we would we would play pranks on each other all the time with our coats, and so like for instance, um, w- one day uh, he did something to me, and I did something to him, so like I come I come into the cafeteria cafeteria gymatorium or whatever, <laughs> and they had this long line rack for your coats, and so I found his coat. And I would uh, stuff it into somebody else's coat to hide his coat so that he couldn't find it. So he had to walk back across the campus without, uh, without his coat. He got wise to this. And so he started uh, wearing a trench coat because it was longer. And so uh, I took his coat and I would proceed to throw it into the women's room. Uh, <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so he couldn't do it. And uh, yeah. You and little so and so. Yeah, yeah. So he couldn't find his coat. And so now, is that something that embarrassed him? No. Is it something that made him cold? Yeah, you know, what I mean? it was kind of like a, you know, whatever. But it, but it also depends on the person. Like, if you're doing it, are, are you doing it to be mean? There's context there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like he was just we we, we were just ragging on each other, yeah, and there was yeah. we weren't gonna stop. You're being just being friends. a stinker. Yeah, like, oh, am I being you know uh, prank wars to be mean spirited, or to like get back at him, or you know whatever to really right. like destroy him? No, no, that's no. that's not what it was. I think yeah. Yeah. I hope that that helps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll do one more quick one. Okay. Yeah. 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 This we'll is a scenario. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is a scenario. Seth, you have scenario. Some, have some scenarios here. Okay. You're reading the newspaper. Okay. You notice a letter to the editor written by a good friend of yours. Okay. In it, they misquote a Bible verse in order to support a political position. What do you do? This is a friend. Yes. All right. Let's make this personal. Okay. Let's say you are reading a newspaper and you notice a letter to the editor written by a good friend of yours. We'll say me. Okay. Let's say I did it. You did it. Okay. okay. And I misquote a Bible verse in order to support my political position. Okay. Um, How would you approach that with me? Well, I mean, I mean, considering our relationship yeah. in particular, um, you know, I mean, I would, I would talk to you about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would go to you and say, hey, you know, uh, I love you, brother. I... Uh, but let's take a look. Let's open up our Bibles and let's take a look at that verse within its context, okay? And uh, and then have a discussion about it. Yeah. And hopefully, Lord willing, be able to come to a, a conclusion on it. Yeah. And and knowing you, I mean, you know, I mean, like it, because yeah. if you're friends, maybe I'm depends. a bad person because I know how you would handle yeah. it with me. Yeah, you know how it would be. How I mean, about, maybe vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, we we'd work it out. Yeah. Uh, but like, but in this case, That's it's a political. Yeah. It's a political thing. It's a political. And, and, it's a political and me, and, letter and, me and you are on the same page yeah. politically. So, so, like, let's say, let's let me like, like add something to the sure. scenario. Like, okay, let's spice it up. Yeah. So it's it's somebody. It's a friend of mine who's supporting a political stance 
that I disagree with. Ooh, okay. How, how's Spicy. that? Spicy. Right. Yeah. So, um, all right. And do we want to spice it up even further and choose one? Um, <laughs> let's. I, I was going to go to the abortion issue, but I'm not going to go there. How about? How that's about the this? spicy. That's, that's ghost the, pepper. That's that's the ghost pepper. But yeah. I, I, you let's know, go I'm jalapeno. Not, let's go jalapeno. Let's yeah. let's back it up. Let's say climate change. Ooh, okay. That's a, that's okay. a jalapeno. That's a jalapeno. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure. Is that all right? You know sure, what I mean? Yeah. Like. Christians, conservative Christians disagree on that one. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so they're using uh, a text of scripture, you know, uh, you know, and there's some scriptures that you could use to try and back that up. Okay. But let's say that, let's say that you, you take it out of, out of, out of its context or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that handling it carefully, I think that handling it, um, you know, within its context, going back to the text of scripture, making sure that you understood it, stand, this is why you should know your Bible. Um, you know, besides understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ, I think one of the things that we promote mm-hmm. here at Gospelicious is know your Bible, know it deeply, get yourself a good study Bible, Amen. understand the context, and then address it in that particular way. And address it, again, uh, you know, the scripture talks about this in places like First Timothy and Titus, when it talks about correcting, one of my jobs as pastor is to yeah. correct is to do so with all the, guys yeah. that is not an easy part of his job no no not at all and uh, <laughs> but to do so with all long suffering and yes. patience um and grace and grace yeah. um to speak the truth in love yeah. okay because especially when it gets into political stuff especially today where everything's so polarized you it, cannot yeah. you cannot allow your emotions right to guide you because it goes um, from jalapeno to ghost pepper real quick oh yes if you're not careful. And as Christians, we can't be that way. And, and yeah. by the way, I would say this, like, just kind of bouncing off of that idea, it's, you know, with, with the tensions the way that they are today with politics. So the reason why we don't really get into politics here on Gospelicious, we do and we don't here and there. Um, yeah, we dip our toe every now and we, then. Once in a while. But you not, know what I mean? not too much. Yeah. You know, I think everybody knows where we're at if we're coming <laughs> at it from a biblical viewpoint. Yeah. But, I, but I think that the, but, you know, really, when you start getting into the politics of things, um, tread lightly. Yeah, yeah. Tread lightly, especially if you're going to Christian. If you're a Christian, I'm going to tell you this: don't get online. And uh, you know, this is written in a uh, in a newspaper, so somebody's obviously writing it. But I I don't know who you know what I mean. Like as far as you know, that's concerned. I mean, like you know, writing editorials or whatever. But yeah. more than likely, a lot of these kind of things happen where people are commenting on maybe a Facebook page or a Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you know, same, and, same kind of scenario. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're going to be very careful. Uh, yeah, you're, care- you're entering a public forum. Yeah. So, yeah. And especially if you're going to quote scripture, if you're going to quote scripture on the opposite end of the spectrum, make sure it's in context. Make sure you're using that scripture correctly because uh, you can make any Bible verse say whatever you want. Um, and um, that's one of, not one, good. Of, one of the devil's favorite tools. That's right. And so uh, I think that the, I think that. Yeah, I mean, in terms of dealing with it, um, I think that our obligation as Christians is to love one another enough to speak truth into one another. And so, if, in that particular case, yeah, I would, I would confront, yeah. but in all long suffering and patience. I and think, love. I think the act of misquoting a Bible verse, in general, because mm. this question is asked to you and me. Mm. You're a pastor. I'm an elder. Yeah. We're we're church leaders. Yes. So if we hear someone, if if, if a, and the question says, a good friend of ours. Good friend, yeah. So if a good friend of mine is misquoting a Bible verse, mm. it's kind of our obligation to be like, hey, man. Yeah, I love you. I, I love you. Here's what we need. We need to talk about this. You know, yeah. like, I, I love you enough. If you're my good friend, and I and you're really a good friend of mine, and that good friend is going to receive it. I mean, re- even and if And you're going to show d- them that love by addressing it exactly, with them. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You yeah. wouldn't, letting it go would not be love. No, no, no. That would be, I mean, letting someone be, letting someone like uh, be led in a different direction like yeah. that. Uh, or letting someone, what's the way, what's, what am I trying to say? Letting someone yeah. be in error is is not love. It's not love. Uh, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Some people might say you just let them do what they want. Mm-mm. No, that's, nope, nope. No. That's not. It's you, not what love is, guys. You 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 love people enough to tell them the truth. Um, yep. Love in truth. Yep. Amen. Yep. Good stuff. Amen, brother. Thank you, Seth. Yes, thank you, Seth, for the poem. That was my favorite part. Mailbag. <laughs> Mailbag. I'd love to do more mailbag. 
Yes. Send us more mailbag. <laughs> yes, yes. Even you, Seth. Please. I, have I want. Our, uh, I want mailbag. That's right. Should see see if we can have Seth on here at some point. You know what I mean? I think he would be uh, fun he, to interview at some would, point. He would jump on that. I think he probably would. You he know would. what I mean? I know. You know, we have you to know talk just because you said that, we're going to hear about oh, it. I know. We, we are going to hear about it, which is fine. I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> mind. You know what I mean? Interview our fan. <laughs> 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 you notice how I don't say fans. Are fans. S- singular. <laughs> no, like Seth's a great guy. Like Seth's a great guy. Uh, yeah, I love you, Seth. You're uh, a great guy. Thank you, hey, Seth. That's hey, man, that's great. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll kick it over to our interview now. But before we do, uh, I just want to plug uh, our channel. Yes. Um, we are on YouTube. Obviously, you're watching this or listening to this. But if you're watching this, it's either going to be on YouTube or Sermon Audio. Yep. Sermon Audio is the semi-exclusive home of Gospelicious Radio. You mm-hmm. can connect with us, engage with us. All the links you need to do so are on our link tree. Yep. Our link tree link is in the description below, so don't forget to do that. Um, guys, uh, again, we mentioned it earlier in the episode, but uh, we, we um, earlier had the awesome opportunity to chat with the president of Davis College. Amen. Uh, Dr. Doug Blank. Um very humble man. Yes. Um, hesitated to use the word doctor there. I know. I know. He didn't want that, but you know, know. what? He is. I know. No, he's, yeah. He's, he's uh, be, just being just respectful. Just a humble, humble yep. man. He's a, he's a great guy. Love that guy. Uh, loved chatting with him. Again, we, we already talked about what we talked about, but um, stick around for the interview. That's coming up right now. Uh, but until then, for Pastor Tim Howard. Happy painting, and God bless, my friends. I'm out of mind. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Enjoy the interview, and join us back here next week for episode 70. 70. I know. I can't believe it. It's 70. You Seven know, zero. Yeah. 70th episode. Praise God. Uh, so uh, check back again next week. Enjoy the interview. Amen. Talk to you later. God Bye. bless you. Well. <laughs> it's on air. Uh, yeah. That, You're we, on air. That's, on the that's air. official we, there, brother. I did turn the light on, didn't I? We have not spared the expense. No, we no. have not. I know we got to get that as a permanent fixture somewhere that, uh, here. You know, when we get our more permanent, uh, we've yeah. I, I found that for like five bucks at like TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx. <laughs> yeah. And I said, and I saw it, and I said, you we know must what? Have it. Well, I I must have it first, and then second of all, <laughs> it's going to make us look way more legitimate. Yes, got if that we have... on air sign. <laughs> well, mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special episode of Gospelicious Radio. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we have a very special guest with us today. It's not Amen. just Tim and I, for, the, for those of you for those of you watching. Yeah. Uh, there's a third person at the Gospelicious desk. This is the first time I ever called it that. Gospelicious desk. That's it right. Is, it is he, the Gospelicious he is, desk. He is the, the president of Davis College. He is, and I promise this will be the first and last time I say this, Dr. Doug Blank. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for brother. coming. <laughs> um, earlier, you were saying, uh, you know, um, call me Doug. Call me Doug. Right. So we're going to call you Doug. Thank you. For that. <laughs> <laughs> but for the sake of introduction, for those who don't know you, um, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank Amen. you for, for thank joining you for being us. Here, um, uh, this is a very special day. Uh, we just had you here uh, at Eastford Baptist for a, a talk with a bunch of local pastors. Um, Tim, do you want to go into some of that? That was yeah, that was a, a good yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah, we uh, uh, had uh, basically two of our pastoral cohorts. Um, one that's kind of in the central part of the state, and the other one that's up here in the northeast corner, and invited them out uh, to meet uh, Brother Doug and just uh, introduce them and hopefully make some connections out here and be a be. A, I know I know our brother's desire. I'm sure he'll talk about that. Is just to be a blessing to to our churches. Um, yeah. Brother's not just the president, but he's also a pastor as, as well, mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm so thankful for uh, for him and his ministry and being able to work together with you, brother. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, no, so yeah, it was a great, it was a great time. Yeah, it good was good chili. Yeah, that chili was, was good. good chili. I, you know, I had, I don't know, did you have any of the chili, brother? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Who you made know? that? Did your wife make that? No, we we got it from Costco. What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Like, what? See, that was, was your opportunity the, right there. I know. Yes, oh, my wife, my beautiful wife. She, uh, yes, I know. <laughs> set you up and you blew it. I did. I did. Sarah's not listening. See, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. You know. Here yeah, I am. Here I am thinking that Tim was setting himself wow. up for a nice pat in the back there. Yes, yeah. I know. Yeah, but uh, it was delicious chili. Kind of dropped the help. ball there. I know I did. What can I say? What can I say? You know, <laughs> I know. I'm still learning. Still learning, brother. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, uh, it was. Very you you, good. you uh, you've been kind enough uh, kind enough to to join us today for a little bit, and uh, uh, thank you for giving us your time. Uh, I, I want to talk about Davis College, obviously. Right. Um, 
but I, I kind of want to get to know you a little bit too. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned in, uh, again, mm-hmm. some of this might be repetitive from this morning, but, um, you mentioned uh, briefly some of your background. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you had mentioned and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, your grandfather was a dairy farmer. Yes. Uh, that must have been an interesting upbringing. How how was that uh, growing up? And you also mentioned that you you never thought that you would go into ministry, but yet here you are. <laughs> uh, can you talk about the, the the beginnings of that and and uh, growing up on that dairy farm? Yeah. Well, so my dad was a pastor uh, growing up, uh, but I would spend uh, summers uh, on the on the farm. So, um, yeah, as soon as school let out, off to uh, Western New York, I'd go spend the summer uh, right up until about the last day conceivable. Then, I guess sometimes that was literally uh, the night before the first day of school. Oh, really? (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I spent summers, a very close relationship with my grandpa. That would have been my mother's father. Uh, very close relationship with him. Amen. So uh, there was one uh, one summer in particular. My grandmother had uh, taken ill. She was in this was uh, Wyoming County, so Warsaw, mm-hmm. New York, Western New York, and um, the nearby hospitals in Batavia. My grandmother was in the hospital that summer. I was 13 years old, um, so he was spending considerable amount of time at the hospital. That left me. Uh, basically, what do you call running the farm? Mm. Uh, mm. Sort of, uh, not really running the heavy machinery at thirteen, but <laughs> doing a lot of stuff. Mm. Uh, and you know, my grandfather taught me a lot about responsibility. So I have to say, uh, staying close to the mic, uh, <laughs> would have to say um, that one of One of my core values, I guess, in life, uh, these are the things you reflect on later, but you uh, asking me that question sort of now brings it to mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, You say, why do I behave the way I behave, and where did I get that from? And I I have this this one word, responsibility. Amen. Amen. so why do I behave the way I do? Why do I live the way I do? Why do I do the things I do? Um, because I'm responsible. Hmm. You know, maybe it's people of my generation. I'm saying that now because I'm older. But um, <laughs> there's that thing. Uh, I was raised to be responsible. Yes. And I don't, I don't know that maybe people are still. Hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah. I just know right. I was. Right. Yeah. So that was particularly um, ingrained in me Mm. during those days on the farm. I'm not saying my parents didn't, because they did, because they were raised, my mother was raised by the person that was doing that. Right. So, but I know in particular, and it wasn't in an authoritarian, disciplinarian way. Mm. Uh, I love my grandfather, you know, Mm. so... So it was more modeled for you. Not it, w- it, was, to- it was modeled for me. Right. And y- yet, um, yeah, it was a discipline of, um, you know, going out there, d- doing those doing those chores day in, day in, day out. Who else was going to do it? Mm. Who else was going to feed those cows? Yeah. Who else was going to milk those cows? Who else was going to? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Right. So um, I'm responsible. And to this day... All right, here, here's one for you. Um, an excuse is a reason for not doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> okay, number yeah. one. So if anyone tell gives me, and if any of my employees are listening, if any if if anyone <laughs> I'm gives, listening, I'm if, listening. If anyone <laughs> if anyone gives me an excuse, they are giving me a reason for not doing their job. Yes. Right. So I learned that a long time ago. So not me personally to be giving excuses out of my mouth right mm. so i i'm a results based person i know mm. this is more than you asked in a question but it's okay i'm a results based person so um i i hold myself accountable to that standard so i either did it or i didn't i either did it or i didn't mm. there is no such thing as an excuse i can't say well this or that or this or that right and all those things go back to that 
that dairy farm. Um, all those less, all those less, all those life lessons go back yeah. there. So I think uh, my grandfather uh, trained me for a life of ministry more so than any mm. That's any, interesting. any fantabulous PhD degree right. ever gave me. You know, <laughs> right? Um, Amen. Those cows taught me uh, mm. more about how to do ministry than yeah. than any school in the UK. Amen. Amen. That responsibility, that work ethic, that dedication. Yeah. It was all Amen. learned at that point. Wow. That's Praise interesting. God. When so um you said your father uh, was a pastor, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Um what what was it um that eventually led you into that path? You I mean, again, you kind of briefly touched on it before, but uh if you could talk about what what led you on that path to ministry? Um uh, and when when did you when did you suddenly realize, oh, I'm this is this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I, Amen. It was during my my, my teenage years, um, so it's a little murky, a little foggy. Um, if I try to sharpen the focus on that, um, so all this would have happened probably in my teenage years, uh, and so during that time, and I I don't know precisely. I can't point to an exact yeah. moment, but what I can say is that through, let's say, conspiracy of <laughs> um, incidences or, or, or mm, let's say, context, like um, missionaries coming, making presentations at church, sort of things like that. Um, so here's one for you. Um a guy comes. He shows some slides. Those are funny-shaped square objects, and you can uh, project. <laughs> yeah, those, those. You can project. I those. <laughs> you can project them onto a wall. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> for, for all for you a, kids for, listening, yeah, yeah. you, yeah, you youngins, the, for all you youngins out there. <laughs> Yeah. A projector. What yeah. we just called a projector. The overhead, <laughs> overhead. Yeah. You overhead, guys, yeah. Yeah. Talk to Brother Steve about the overhead. That's you right. Know, I think he stopped using it uh, six months ago. We still uh, have a couple of those downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, six months ago. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Old school. I Old love school, it. yeah. Anyway. But yeah, yeah projector, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, he, um, but I have this kind of, and this is either actual or made up. Um, and what I mean by made up is sometimes our memories are where we remember remembering. Um, and mm. I don't know that we actually, um, these are actual memories. Mm. Right. But so I have this image of uh, someone coming and he is uh, in an African context, uh, he's standing. Um, he's teaching, um, and, and so on. And I remember as a young person, you know, observing that. And so, you know, without sounding too, um, divinely inspired, Mm. (laughs) it was like God saying, yeah, there you go. That's you. Mm. Yeah. That's you someday. Amen. And uh, you're like saying, that's who someday. <laughs> no, that's you. And, it, you know, so anyway, sure? <laughs> it's sort of, but it, you know, it's really not that sharply focused, you know, sure. but it's sort of like an impression in the form of a vision, <laughs> you know, but it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. sort of like an impression yeah. that you get as a young person when you're observing some missionary presenter in mm. black and white because it was in the 60s, you yeah. know, so... <laughs> Um, and you're observing this and you're, you're experiencing that, um, and you really don't know what to make of it Mm. except that, huh, could that, could that be me doing that? Mm. You know, maybe you're identifying in some way, but how, how could you identify Mm -hmm. except that, well, my father's a pat, you know, what, 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 how, how do I make, so you begin to have these feelings and maybe it's God beginning to speak to you to the effect that, um you you know i i want you serving me i want you well how so 
uh, mm. how, how so like 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 my father up here mm. am i going to be like my father am I, you know and so yeah. that sort of led and progressed and never left let's say that never left me it never left me yeah. Amen. and there's a lot of other things that went on though with that one um i back in those days uh, it was so different because uh, you there was no thought of being a past, you know, it was limited, mm. pastor, evangelist, missionary, period. And there was no doing that without uh, a college degree. Mm. There was no doing anything without a college degree. Right. What are you going to do, pump gas? Right. So you, you, a college degree. Well, I was not college material. There was no college that would take me there was no it was impossible Mm -hmm. no no college so and and plus uh, you had to be able to to speak you had to actually be able to formulate words with your mouth (laughs) i'm pretty sure that was a requirement right (laughs) formulate words with your mouth in an intelligible way yeah so that other people could actually understand understand you communicate what yeah. you were saying. It stands to reason that that would be a that a probably thing. a requirement. Yeah. A little, little, that should be required. That should be right. That should be required. <laughs> well, I had this problem in that I was extremely introverted, right. still am, and when I got up in front of people, I froze. Mm. So to graduate high school, you had to pass a speech unit sure well uh, one thing i was very good at was was studying how to avoid said unit (laughs) and i looked through the curriculum there you go i kept and i got all of my my senior year in high school and i had managed to avoid it avoid it right but i finally came down to you've got Mm -hmm. it you know, the advisor say, you got to take, it's either this or this. You procrastinated long enough, sir. You so, got to so, take so it. So the, the one course was some bogus something because it had one little project in it where you had to stand in front of the class for yeah. like two seconds and make like you knew something. A little, yeah. <laughs> so like a report of some kind. Yeah. yeah something along those lines, This was right? going to be a, a book report. Right. And uh, so, again, forget about it. I was like the last student to go. And the English teacher, you couldn't have asked for a, a better st- teacher. And she oh, said, amen. "She said, okay, I, you know, write it down." She says, "Whatever you're going to say, write it down on this card, yeah. hmm. right there. Just write it down on this card, and go up and just stand there and read it. Read it, right? You yeah. got it. Yeah, Doug. that's you a got start, it. right? Yeah, that's you, a good start. You got right. it, Doug. Just go on up there. Yeah. That's it. Just go on up there and read it. Sure. And I got up there and I. I hold. I was holding it. Yeah. I want to tell you, I was holding it, yeah. and there were words there. <laughs> oh no! And I was holding it, and uh, the thing is, I could hear the words in my head. Yeah. But it didn't. Nothing. Nothing coming out. Nothing, oh man. Nothing coming out. So just frozen. Frozen. And oh, if wow. you could imagine the yeah. most embarrassing mm. of situations, the teacher actually came up, and she had to whisper in my ear oh, to. Oh no! To start yeah, reading yeah, yeah. The one word at a time, just wow. to get the prime oh, to wow. pump to get it going. That's how bad this was. Wow, it's crippling. Oh, yeah, wow, wow. just how bad this was. Wow. So this guy was yeah. was going to what? Yeah. Be a preacher? Are you kidding? Hmm. This this guy was going to be some rocket scientist, PhD. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this guy, <laughs> right? Uh, so anyway, I had all these. I had good reasons, good solid reasons to yeah. justify, right? To justify, um, you know, why whatever this vision was, right. you know, wasn't wasn't going to materialize. But, but nonetheless, um, somehow it did. And I mean, I mean, when I say it did, yeah. I don't mean in the like vague, right? General um, metaphorical sense. Yeah. I mean, in the actual literal mm. sense. Yeah. yeah. Because what I saw as a teenager, yeah. I saw as an adult standing in Kenya mm. some years later, yeah. literally yeah. what I saw yeah. standing there. Wow. Wow. 
Mm. I mean, that actual. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's an effect, by the way, ladies I and know. gentlemen. Yeah. I know, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure Adam knows that, I but know, you can actually tap on the top if you want yeah. effect. Yeah. There's a reverb. I know there's there. a reverb. There's a reverb there, there effect. Is. I, know. That's yeah. a, I think that's our. Uh... I'm telling you, gentlemen, there are effects <laughs> in this room that you are just not aware of. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's our special effects special machine. Special effects. I'm <laughs> telling you guys, I can. You will have more views. Oh yeah, amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. You just don't know your potential. I'll, I know. I'll give you a cue those, to, yeah. to do the. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those, those sound effects. Good. You know what I mean? Good. Be like yeah. that guy. Was it from Police Academy? The guy with the. You know the what I mean? You remember effect. that sound oh, effect guy? Yeah. <laughs> Tim, Tim, rein yourself yeah. in. I know, I got to. I, I know. know. <laughs> you know what I mean? There you go. Amen. <laughs> so, um, we're... Uh, <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, you're at the end of high school now. Mm. At the end of high school. Yeah. You, uh... <laughs> this I feel raining us, series, raining us I all in here. I know, we're all... I, gotta, I, gotta I know, it's a whole series you know, coming out here. <laughs> so... We can get, we can have them back. No, we can have them no, back. No, it's on, funny. You know, it's funny because right. again, I want to be con uh, considerate of your time, but uh, and I want to talk about Davis before you go. Um, but I, I am curious because we're gonna have I, you back. Yeah, I, I want to for sure. <laughs> uh, I, I it's funny that, that that story you you tell you tell is uh, is one that I can relate with a lot because that I had issues with public speaking as well mm -hmm. uh, in Same that here. high school Same college. And yet now, you know, all these years later, I'm I'm teaching every week. I'm yep. even preaching for yeah, you sometimes. Yep. Absolutely, yep. I if, if you asked me then, you know, you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be I'm like be like no way, <laughs> nope, no way. You know, me preaching? Right. Uh, yeah, right. You that sure? The, yep. So I mean, my first my first sermon was, "Are you sure, God?" I remember was yep, about yep, yep. Mo Moses and, yep. and God, you know, commissioning Moses. It's Moses was like, uh. Me? Um, uh, I can't speak well. I can't speak good. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, I that's, that's, I I, uh, you sure? <laughs> Me? You sure, God? You know? no, that was a great one. But, uh, great. but anyway, I, I say that to say that um, it, it, it's funny how, how God works not only in your heart, but on your, well, your skills and your, right. your, your abilities. Mm -hmm. He's the one um, that equips us. Right. He's the one right. that takes us. When, when did you start noticing that turnaround, I guess, from that crippling fear of public speaking uh, or talking to? Did you? Was it a slow thing or was it a, 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 a what, quick turnaround for you? What turnaround? Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> you're obviously able to, uh, to, to, to do things now, but, you know. Yeah. I uh, is that so? So it is something that's still. Uh, no, you did great this morning. I was, was going to say, say I, li it seemed, it seemed I listened to, to him on Fridays. You know what I mean? Um, I listened to him on his uh, uh, at church. I guess you know, I should say well, too. I know? should preface that question with: if you're not, if there's no nerves or no sort of, we shouldn't approach it lightly, right? Right. Right. So yes. if there's if there's no nerves of any kind, I mean, are we really doing it right? I guess mm. is is that's a fair question to ask, right? I mean, yeah. So, so I we understand the seriousness. Of I, there I, like I, a reliance upon God kind two, of things, there's right? A, there's a couple of things in general, and one is that, um, so preparation is, um, it's not the panacea, but but preparation it, it goes a long ways mm, uh, yeah. with, with anyone, right? Regardless, with anyone. So. Um, that's that's critical. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not I'm not as uh, uh, affected, you know, uh, that right, way right. as I was. But but still, um, I mean, there there's some situations. I, I'm n no, not not like this morning. I'm a big, it's because I'm with the guys. Yeah. Sure, sure. Come, no, come on, of, with the guys, right? Group of right. Guys, group of pastors. The guys, the guys. I'm with the guys. I'm with the guys. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, when I so when I was doing undergraduate work. Um, so I went. I was a little bit late starting undergraduate work. Um, I had three kids at the time and uh, decided to go to the Criswell College in Dallas, Texas. This was a private school. Oh, I never realized that you know, two out of three. Um, this was a this was a a, a, a kingmaker, right? Kingmaker mm. school. So, 
two out of three students don't make it. This wasn't a school that they, you know, try to beef up the enrollment and say, run mm. them all through. This yeah. was two yeah. out of three, goodbye. Right. You know, only, right. Uh, only, wow. the to- only the top make like it. Exclusive, like exclusive. Oh, yeah, yeah, only the top. I didn't know that. Right. Ugh. <laughs> Eight weeks, eight, eight weeks in, I'm taking the midterm on an intro to New Test, intro to New Testament. Wow, intro yeah. to New Testament. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking the midterm. Wow, I got a 74 on it. Yeah. I got a 74 on the intro to New Testament. <laughs> I wanted to crawl, right. just to crawl, right, somewhere and die. Yeah. Just humbling, humbling, and, and humbling. I, die. I, uh, I was gonna quit, right. and just say that's it. Yeah, we're we're moving from Dallas back to New York. I told my wife, right. um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but not this because not this, okay. no self-respecting church deserves to have a pastor who gets a 74 on an intro <laughs> to New Testament yeah. exam. No yeah. church deserves right. that, and I'm not going to be that guy. <laughs> um, and I went through one of the most horrific periods right, right there i mean just white knuckling I, I i don't know how to describe it yeah so we just prayed and uh it was a crucible i, I mean in the in the so um i can't recall all the details yeah. except decided to, to press through it amen and it was like god i don't know how to describe it except um, the evidence is the record. Yeah. The evidence is the record because God just flipped the switch. Mm. And from that point on, there isn't a blemish in the record straight wow. through multiple Amen. PhDs, and there, there's Praise no God. blemish. Mm. Matter of fact, Liberty University said, yeah. What you just, you just killed our program. <laughs> um, and so did Criswell College. Yeah. Dr. Criswell. Yeah. Um, yeah. The sainted Dr. Criswell, um, when he shook my hands at uh, at graduation, yeah. uh, I thought he was going to curse me out. But he <laughs> he said he looked at Paige Patterson at the time right. and said, "I thought you made this program hard." <laughs> he said, "How can this guy blow? Th- how did oh, he do man. that? How did he do that?" Uh, <laughs> they're both looking incredulously yeah. at each other, you know, right? So, um, cheater. Yeah, yeah. This was. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> nah, yeah. So what yeah, happened yeah. was, yeah. after that eight weeks, yeah. not only did that happen, but I'm the guy at 7 a.m. in the library at yeah. a round table teaching the other students. Wow. Wow. So if it's Greek, I got them all sitting so around there. there. Guys delving into the it. Greek text. If, if it's whatever it is, um, this is how I prepared for exams Amen. was by teaching everybody else right. the lectures. Oh. That's the best way to be able to do it. Wow. By the time I'm a senior, the faculty um, was having me lecture the classes. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, as, a, as an undergrad. <laughs> wow. I was, That's the Lord, I was, man. I was lecturing in the grad school as an undergrad. Yeah. Wow. Substituting for the faculty. What an amazing amount of trust to yeah. put, to put into a say, student. I was going to say, wow, you know, that's amazing. Um, that's, that's awesome. Praise and God. talk about the power of the Lord, too. <laughs> you know, yeah. there too, I know, you know, that's amazing. And then I depressed uh, Dr. Patterson yeah. when I summarily left. Oh, yeah? Well, I, <laughs> just when I graduated yeah. With, yeah. My, with my B.A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And left. Well, to plant yeah. to plant a church and your teaching experience as well and the teaching and experience left. right right he was yeah. bound I was gonna just go straight through then and get my PhD he had me handpicked for a se- for the oh because seminary. he wanted to keep you all right yeah. I was yeah, yeah just, all right just I like my get buddy yeah, yeah. Danny Aiken at <laughs> yeah at South uh, uh, yeah at Southeastern so he he uh, he had me the same. You see what Danny Aiken is now. Right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, so yeah, he, Dan Aiken. Yeah, that's I, where I, That's what he had me pegged for. Oh, was he really? The wow, same, the same wow. situation. Wow. So I, I did my usual. No, more of a continuation of of high school onward. But 
Um, I, I, I want to talk about Davis a little bit before you go here. We got about you know, about fifteen minutes here, but uh, unless you had any other questions, feel free to no, jump no, no, in. No, 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 please. I'm, yeah, I'm going to kind of add and go. I know let's, I uh, let's, yeah. Let's do about six more minutes because then I can get on the road. Okay, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, let's yeah, that's it. fine. Sounds uh, like so a game let's talk play. about Davis College then, because I want to know. Um, you know, obviously, I want you to be able to plug Davis and uh, yeah. to, to tell people about Davis. Um, how did you? Uh, I guess for the thirty thousand foot overview, yeah. uh, how, how did you get involved with Davis College and and Right. What, you know, what what is what is the school now? Yeah, started uh, started about uh, twelve years ago at Davis. Started as an adjunct professor, and then sort of, um, um, yeah, moved on to, uh, yeah, more uh, intensive uh, responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. So as the school <clears throat> needed, you know, more more help uh, and so on. Um, the best best information is at the website, which would be davisny.edu, and you can see uh, the programs are offered online and uh, on its main campus in Pottersville, New York. So we share the campus with Word Life Bible Institute. Um, yeah, one one program, uh, Bachelors of Religious Education. It's offered in multiple concentrations, but. Um, uh, uh, the website would would give you um, the information on that. Uh, so I do uh, I do uh, teach in the classroom. I do teach online. Amen. Um, so I uh, like to stay uh, involved with the students. So um, yeah, um, I I think uh, the program that is built uh, on the campus there is a good mix of uh, what we'd like to philosophically call head, heart, and hands, which Amen. is a balance of... good of it this morning, yeah. <laughs> which is a balance of uh, ac <clears throat> academics, uh, spiritual uh, development, and practical application of, of what the students are learning. So I, um, a, a good balanced uh, approach. So it's not all just... Uh, academics and book learning, uh, whereas, you know, you know uh, sometimes a student could say, like, like at a community college, for example, you could say, well, I'll drive to campus, I'll, I'll get my, my education, and I'll maybe go to work or something like that. Uh, well, here are the competencies that you're learning in the classroom, then you're going to get a direct application through what we call student ministries. So you have to do 30 hours of student ministries mm. per semester, which mm. means you have to be involved um, with something directly in a local church, not just attending church, right. but you have to be involved in some ministry of that local church or some, some particular ministry in the area. So, for example, our students will be involved in snow camp, uh, right. word life that's coming up, or or sports ministry, or or something. Right. And that has to be uh, supervised. So there's certain criteria that has to be met, so on and so forth. So uh, there's there's direct application. Um, so for our emphases that they do, um, there's an internship. Uh, three-hour internship, and that has to be supervised as well. Mm. So there's lots of practical application uh, uh, in, internal to the degree uh, as well as the academics, and then as far as spiritual formation, uh, there's two chapels uh, during the week plus uh, devotional times that are integrated into their uh, weekly lifestyle there on the main campus. And... Um, mentoring with staff and um uh yeah uh, other conferences during the year and things of that nature yeah amen well I, you know i i um i started working full-time for word of life a couple of years ago and i had heard about the partnership with davis college and i thought it was just kind of this i thought it was just the coolest thing um yeah. i had i had never heard of and maybe it's just because of my limited experience but I had never heard of another college um, sharing so much with another college on their campus. Yeah, I just thought it was such a cool thing that that the the two schools were kind of working together to kind of um, 
I, I hate to use the word coexist, but it's, it, right. it's such an overused word these days. But it, it is sort of a well, they have the same vision, same yeah, yeah you know, absolutely right. for the for the students sharing there. resources. And, um, there's, and there's, I mean, b- being on campus the few times that I've been up there, I mean, like there's an energy on campus, and yeah. um, and uh, you know, these students, I mean, they're they're there, and uh, I mean, you were you were mentioning it this morning, there, brother, when when I was up during the summer with you. Um, you know, and I think that that's the great part about it is, is that, is that you can, I mean, even having the president to be able to have such a personal relationship with these students and to be able to invest in them and to be able to partner with them and to know that you're on their side. And I, and I see that love that you have for the students there, brother. And, uh, I mean, even like, you know, you mentioned this morning is they're coming up and getting their degrees. Like you're. They're not just shaking your hand and walking off. You're shaking their hand and you're saying, hey, listen, I'm going to talk to you for a second. Every one of those students. And I see your love for those students, brother, and it's inspiring to me. And uh, I'm so thankful to be to be a part of it. I'm so thankful for you. And uh, I'm just so thankful to for the opportunity, brother. And uh, and I just uh, I I know I'm going to keep pontificating here. (laughs) I know we're going to go, but I know. We'll end here. Um, I guess one last thing I wanted to ask you is there are there any specific ways that we can pray for you, pray for Davis, pray for anything that's going on up there? Uh, Yeah, I think our biggest challenge is is um, always going to be enrollment. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, without the students, we don't have a college. We can right. have the biggest vision in the world. We got greatest ideas, all, all these things, but mm-hmm. we need students. And um, so it doesn't sound vulgar, vain, or anything like that. It's basically the idea of, of students means um, peop- disciples to prepare for kingdom service. You know, if you think it, think about yeah. it that way, you know mm-hmm. that um, you know obviously it's to it's to serve the local church. So. Um, Lord willing, then, that, that there's uh, people that um, we can be preparing um, on that yeah. campus that can serve the local church. That, Amen. That, right. That's ultimately what we're talking about here, that the Lord would raise that up. That's our, that's our biggest need right now. That's, that's kind of our, our survival. That's the church's – that doesn't even sound theologically correct for me to say it that way <laughs> right. that's the church's survival that's 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 god's true yeah yeah that's god's area right, right? Exactly. that's not that's not for us to say oh sure. lord let your church survive you know that's yeah. that, no, I don't, he'll, he'll... What, what kind of a prayer is that right. but but it's <laughs> Amen. it's it's basically like lord if you if you would be pleased to yes. permit us to um prepare um you know your servants yes. to work yeah. in your um, in your ch- in your church, you know the the church that you are are birthing. Then, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Something we'll get it. Yeah, yeah. Amen. We'll get, we'll get it. it. We'll get it. You'll be the theology police. There you yeah, go. I know that's. We, will, we, we, we enjoy that. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. dub it. We'll, we'll dub it over. So we will make yeah. this work. Yeah, yes, amen. We'll One way or another, this work. That's right. <laughs> One way or another, that's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll get it to work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you Doug so much for being with us, there, brother. Amen. I. I feel like I could talk to you for a while, yeah, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you at some point, hopefully well, down we'll the consider line. That, consider that another invite we'll, we'll, to, yeah, we'll to consider keep this, this conversation yeah, going. We'll That'll be it. great. We'll yeah, do it. That'll we'll be do great. It. We'll have a whole range of uh, interesting yeah. topics uh, and everything yes. else we that we can get We appreciate you very into. much. Amen. We and do. Uh, again, we'll be praying for you. I'm going to include um, a bunch of the information uh, for application, for online, for in-person, Thank for you. all that. I'll include yeah. links to give to Davis. I know there's links on the on the website for that. Amen. Um, and uh, we'll include all that in the descriptions for that for for this uh, episode. So, uh, and again, I, there's so much more I wanted to talk about. We'll t- I want to talk about the Poland. Um, uh, your involvement with uh, what, what, uh, what's it? Fun? No. What's it called? Did I have this right? Is this the right thing? Yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm not involved with that anymore. Okay. Yeah. I'm but fine. you, I mean, I, you know, you had some. You've done a lot of work overseas and missions, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. I know. So much more. We can get into it. I'm just in, <laughs> independent in Poland. Now. Yeah. Okay. I, I, okay. I'm, I'm not connected with any foundation. Gotcha. So. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just a uh, free man. Amen. There you go. Amen. Sounds That's good. Right. Well, with that, we'll leave you, Doug. Thank just you very much. Just in Oh, there you go. Translation. I know. I'm a free man. There you go. Free man. Amen. Amen. A- yeah, amen. Thank amen. You. Hey, man. You just say it from thank the you. south. Hey, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Anyways, Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, brother. You're amen. Welcome. You're welcome.